Alright, I'm going to continue on troubleshooting slow logins and unresponsive VSOW servers. We got into, talked about a situation before where you have multiple workstations uh, with the same name, just two or more workstations with the same name uh, joining the domain. And when they do, they both are using the same account, but they will have different passwords, and that account will have the password of whichever la workstation that last joined the domain. Uh, so we talk specifically about the bad password error in decrypt integrity check. And so if you haven't seen that video, it's a good video to go over. Uh, that bad password applies also to users um, as well as workstations that just saying it uh, the password does is they're trying to log in with is bad. And so if you have anything trying to log in over and over again with a bad password, it can cause problems. So uh, we talked about that before, and client not found didn't necessarily talk about, but it's along the same lines. That, that client you see have a search going through and you do not uh, it never finds the object because it doesn't exist so those are things that, that can kind of cause slowness uh, that we talked about in the previous video this one will concentrate on group types and we wonder what group types what does that have to do with uh, slowness well it goes with the calculations that happens with the group types. so there's well, first we'll talk about that there's three types of groups there's a domain local, a global, and a universal. And they each have uh, different uh, things as far as regarding their um, ability to assign rights to resources. So a domain local, you can have members that are global or un and universal in any domain. So say you have two domains, domain A and domain B, and you create a domain local group in domain A that domain A can have groups and users that are in domain B but the resources that it can be, have be assigned rights to have to be in the same domain as the group so since it's in domain A the domain local group is in domain A the resources would have to be assigned in domain A as opposed to a universal group right over here we have the universal group is like it says it's universal I, users groups they can be in any of the domains and they can and that group can have assign uh, per permissions to any resource in any of the uh, domains so it's not restricted to just the domain that it's located at so that's the the big difference between the two these are the two that are used the most global not as used quite as extensively it, it's allows for other global groups and users that reside in the same container or not same container same domain as the global uh, group that is created but that global group can then have resources that are uh, permissions to resources that are in other domains if that makes sense so the members have to be inside the same domain as the group where the group is created but the permissions can be any of the uh, two two uh, to uh, resource can be in any of them so brief overview of the three there's there's more information on Microsoft sites about those we're gonna concentrate on what the universal group does so that's the default group type that is when you create a group that's the one that's gonna be set up as uh, by default now when you log in uh, there's a calculation that's done with these universal groups and this calculation is for a virtual attribute called the token group groups domain local and I'll go through a trace and, and uh, NDS trace and show you what is happening now uh, with that so any group that ha is a universal there'll be this uh, calculation done for this virtual attribute and uh, this tid right here uh, talks about that some more and this tid here talks more about the different types of groups uh, the group types so let's first pull up a trace this is the start of a trace of administrator login so we'll do a search we'll just filter kind of search on search request and we can see administrator is logging in we go down next search request we see the domain policy it's looking for the password policy uh, this is the base it's where it's looking at do, 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 getting the information for the password policy returns back this domain password policy so this is you know, obviously for logging in go to the next search request we're looking for 
the ticket granny ticket, the KRB TGT object for Kerberos authentication. Next, we're looking at the configuration container uh, and looking for a, a cross-reference container specifically inside there and the configuration container for you know other um, I won't talk too much about but that this is basic things when we're logging in and then it goes back to the KRB TGT and then the principal name for the KRB TGT and your principal name for your workstation object right here so those are some of the the key things when, when you're logging in next that happens is a search request we see the object SID. We it doesn't do this. The trace doesn't decrypt it. The, what the object SID is, but trust me, it's it's for the administrator, uh, the, the user that you're logging in as, and it's looking for this token groups domain local. Now, like I said, that's a virtual attribute that's calculated, and if we look down here, the sending the results back. The first one is for administrator. Even though it's not a group, it's a self. It's your your own object. It's always going to create uh, calculate that. And then the next we see for the enterprise admins group. Now let's just look at the enterprise admins group. I manager. It's an enterprise admins group it's inside users. Let's click on enterprise admin and we'll click on other. First of all, you'll notice there's nothing in here about a token. Uh, any type of a token groups domain local or any anything like that it says it's virtual it's calculated um, on the fly when you're logging in so let's uh, continue on with the group type click edit this is how we can tell what our group type is it's this number doesn't make a whole lot of sense so we've got this tid here to talk about it. so it if you looked in MMC you could see it plain as day it'll tell you what the group type is uh, but in with our uh, um, the way we're looking at it, what the the value actually is is uh, listed there, and we got a tid to, to talk about it here. So we can see that this type lines up with universal group. So if we wanted to change this to a domain local group, we just change that value uh, and it correspond and so that it corresponded with a domain local group. So we can see that this. Uh, enterprise admins is a universal group. If we continue to look in our trace, so we had an enterprise admins, do the next one, domain admins, there we got another one, and then let's do schema admins, uh, cert publishers, group policy creator owner. So these are all groups that are set up and we're calculating this, this uh, um, token group domain local on. So if you, like you said, if you can see that, that that can cause some resource issues on a DSFW server if you, a user is a member of a lot of, of uh, groups. So let's look at the TID specifically. So from this TID right here uh, that's talking about it, it's slow login and the token groups domain local attribute. So this gets into talking about it and the, the calculation of, of this. So if you have one of the things that it talks about is what we've seen in general is 50 plus uh, groups. A user is a member of 50 plus groups. That's usually when it's seen. It's seen. It, can, it can be less, it can be more, uh, depending on how many users are logging in. Uh, but usually when you have a member, a user that is a member of 50 plus groups, that's when we see it. So how do we rectify this well if you only have one domain then changing it from a universal to a domain local uh, is kind of a no-brainer might as well do it if you have multiple domains then you might you might need to take a look at this and see what rights the groups are assigned to if those groups are assigned to resources just in their own domain then domain local will work otherwise you might have to uh, keep some or all at a universal um, group and just add no more domain controllers to help um, offset the utilization for, for the logins so something to, to look at if, if you know that you you have a lot of groups and you want to change that there's this search you can do this is this actually grab from a uh, 
a script that's un uh, listed in here because the default name context is basically your container. Um, it's just showing here looking for um, this uh, group type and I'll explain it more in this this uh, um, script here that we have. So we've got a script we can run that will automatically create an LDF and if we would like go ahead and make the change for us. And what it's doing is it's going first finding the default name context which is the name of your domain. So in this case, dsfw.lan. So it's finding that. It'll only search within that context. So it's not going to search outside the domain. So it's going to be looking inside the domain and looking for an object class of group. And we're not going to look in built in container or configuration container or users containers because we don't want to t t touch any system created uh, groups. We want to leave those alone. And I think that configuration, I don't even think it has any groups um, per se, but uh, if just by chance something gets created in there for some reason, we don't want to even look in there. So, and if there's a group, a container that you knew specifically you wanted, just do the same thing. Put it in, in here. Put another, you know, if it's a CN or OU or, or whatever, go ahead and put it in there so that it's excluded. So, we're doing a search. This, uh, we're looking, starting at the, uh, removing the any dollar hash signs here. Uh, this said command here is just removing the 80 character limit uh, as far as the wraparound. So it, there's no wraparound. It's just you can have more than 80 characters on a line. And we're looking for, we're doing a said, looking for the first line with the DN, doing a next, uh, creating a new line with a change top modify. In a new line slash n, um, uh, doing a replace with a group type, and then another slash n group type equals, and then changing it to the specific group type of the domain local. Piping it to replace group, um, the, the specific um, LDIF. It'll give us 30 seconds if we'd like to cancel it and look it over. So let's uh, quickly run this. So if we look at it. press control C to stop if we want we can just kind of cat it out the file right here not a whole lot to it so we can we can see all the groups in, and if they're fine then we can go ahead and run it again and just let it go or uh, if you like you can go in and uh, edit this file and remove something uh, so say we didn't want group 2 in do uh, we could go in and, and uh, Modify or group two go group two. We could clean out that line. D D D D D D D D. All right. We could take do that, save it, Shift Z Z, and just do an LDAP modify, and with and import that that LDAP and it'll make that change for us. So nice easy way to go ahead and change that uh, um, group type. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, group types do matter. If you have a lots of groups, that, you know, users are members of lots of groups, definitely look at this something to consider. Uh, otherwise, you really, you're really going to need to get more domain controllers in to help with the utilization of this. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, thanks for watching.